Yes guys, welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel, FPL Coach here. Now in today's video, we're going to quickly run through the end of game week 23. And my goodness, it was a long game week. We obviously had the Burnley versus Watford game, which we'll discuss. Then we'll look into game week 24, we'll review that, what my transfers were, if any at all, going into game week 24, how the team shaped up, how many points I have, etc. And then we're going to have a bit of a live tinker going into game week 25. Obviously there's lots of doubles, so transfers there could be quite key making sure you've got lots of doubles going into game of 25 so yeah we'll have a bit of a live tinker there maybe make a few transfers etc if you like this type of video please like comment and subscribe without further ado let's dive into the video Let's quickly just run through the end of game week 23. You don't need to talk about it loads as we've already done the game week 23 review minus the Burnley versus Watford game, which was Watford's second game, game week 23. So all I was waiting for is Ben Foster's, was he going to play? Was he not going to play? Was I going to get De Gea's points from the bench, etc. So it turned out to be nil-nil. I picked up six points. Uh, obviously, there's not that much to report home out about in terms of actual returns for the team. Ben Foster was actually one of them. Obviously, I... Uh, Dennis as well, which was captain, obviously missed the second game, so we don't need to talk about that, don't need to dwell about that. There was um, plenty of points on the bench, uh, 14 points on the bench was disappointing, but I did pick up the six points for Ben Foster, we move on to game week 24. So I finished on 14.65 after game week 23, which was a, a slight red arrow from 20,894 down to 17,775, and that was just 30 points for the game week, which was terrible. Um, yeah, my squad value is 106.4 million. I've got 0.8 million in the bank. Um, I obviously rolled my transfer as well, so I've only made 25 transfers for the season. That is game week 23 done and dusted. The longest game week in FPL history. Let's look forward to game week 24. Okay, so this was my game week 24 transfer. Obviously, I didn't make any transfers in game week 23, therefore, I had two free transfers going into game week 24. To be honest with you, my team was set up really, really well, and I actually thought about burning a transfer. I actually got a poll out there on Twitter and it was kind of 50-50. So I kind of went with my gut, kind of reluctant self to get rid of DCL. I just feel because he missed the FA Cup game at the weekend, I didn't think he was necessarily just going to start straight away, especially with a new manager coming in. Although I do think Frank Lampard will, um, will like DCL and play a number of minutes. I just feel like it might take him a few games to, to get up to speed. Obviously, Everton's fixtures were fantastic. You can see a sea of green there. But decided to take... Um, DCL out, bring in Edward, for Edward's form because the Palace was decent going into this uh, game week and obviously there's a the double in game week 25 as well so that was kind of in my thoughts um, and obviously you look at the fixtures there, Mon Norwich away, Brentford and then you've obviously got the double with Chelsea and Watford as well so there was some decent sort of fixtures there for, for Crystal Palace as well. So I ended up making that transfer, that left me 2.2 million in the bank and that gives me two free transfers going into game week 25 which obviously is a double game week. Okay, so this is my game week 24 review. Formation ended up being a 1-3-5-2. Obviously, I made the transfer of DCL out, Edward in, and I put him in the lineup, thinking Norwich, nice fix, potentially get a goal or two. And obviously, you've got the doubles coming up as well, so it was kind of a future plan transfer. On the bench, I had Ben Foster, Dennis Mitchell, and Brandon Williams. Nothing to report home in terms of returns, so just seven points on the bench, which you know I normally wouldn't kind of talk about too much, but in previous weeks I've had quite a number of points on the bench so at least this time around I mainly made the right decisions in terms of you know the start 11. The running through the team, De Gea picked up two points, one one draw to, to Burnley in the league so no clean sheet points or save points. Gonzalo picked up a clean sheet and one bonus point in their, in their win against Brentford. Seven points for him. Uh, Trent picked up a clean sheet so six points for him and Suval also picked up a clean sheet in the West Ham one as well but he picked up a yellow so for three in the back four picked up clean sheets which I'm really happy about so we keep moving. Fernandez picked up two points now he could have had more points he had a goal disallowed well so he had an assist disallowed through an offside decision from Brown's header um, but obviously I'm happy with him going forward because obviously Man United got the double. Diogo Jota's coming in clutch, picked up 32 points for me, two goals, max bonus points, clean sheet point, minutes played, etc. Really, really happy with that. Um, I had actually the captaincy on Jared Bowen all, all over the international break, and I decided to just go for Diogo Jota. Something in my head was like, Leicester defensively are really, really poor. I just need to just give it to him and hope he you know, produces. And my goodness, he yeah. has. So, happy with that. Bill Bowden picked up three points, 
Now he is potentially a transfer out over the coming weeks. He's been a little bit frustrating over the last five, six, seven game weeks, but he did pick up a midfield uh, clean sheet points, so three points. Nothing to really shut home about, but it's a point nevertheless. Bowen picked up 11 points. He obviously scored the goal, bonus points, clean sheet point. Minutes played, so happy with that 11. Son picked up seven points, picked up a goal, and he's with Premier League return after sort of being out for a month or so. Edouard came off the bench, picked up one point. Now I know his minutes are going to get managed. It's going to be a lot of rotation in that Crystal Palace team. There were a lot, number of uh, personnel can play in the advanced positions. Hopefully he'll start sort of at least one of the, the double game weeks um, in game week 26. Um, and then Antonio picked up two points, who is another potential transfer out in the coming weeks as well. Um, so yeah, picked up 78 points for game week 24. That puts me in overall 1,543 points, an overall rank of 16,000. 931 from 20,984. So it's kind of like a 4k green arrow, which is about a 19 20% sort of rank increase. Happy with that. The squad value is up to 106.8. That's the highest of the season so far. And I've got 2.2 million in the bank. So I'm kind of well set up, well positioned for my moves for game week 25 and beyond. I've used 26 transfers for the season, which for this, for me, is probably, I'm normally looking at around probably 30 at this stage of the season. So that's kind of been one of my strategies and, and to be honest with you, picking the right players has probably helped that as well. So minimizing those hits has been fantastic. Okay, so I've got a couple of different scenarios in terms of transfer options ahead of game week sort of 25, 26, and they're all kind of geared towards how to bring back Mo Salah. Now, option number one is just taking one transfer out of the two free transfers I've got this game week. Taking out Sufa, I'll bring in Tierney. Now West Ham, a bit, a bit more shaky, a bit more defensively weak um, as a team over the last sort of six to eight game weeks. So I think out, taking out Sufao and Mini and Kieran Tierney is probably a good decision. However, some people will say, hang on a minute, game week 25, game week 27, Tierney has no fixtures. I'm specifically targeting for game week 26 where they've got the double and it's two home fixtures, Brentford and Wolves at home. So that's kind of what I'm thinking of doing. Game week 25, we're gonna bring on Brandon Williams, we're gonna bring in Mitchell. So we'll have a bit of a live tinker later on and you can see exactly how the team will shape up. Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking for option number one. Like I said, it's just one free transfer. It leaves me 1.8 million in the bank. And then hopefully I can bring in Mo Salah in game week 26. Okay, this is kind of transfer options for game week 25. It involves two free transfers. It involves bringing in Mo Salah ahead of game week 25. However, it means that I have to sell Son and I don't get Kieran Tierney either, just because of the budget. So Stufal will definitely still go. We spoke about that already. And then I think Ben White's kind of the next Arsenal sort of defensive asset that's kind of more nailed other than Ramsdale. Um, so two home games for them, game week 27, fantastic, that's fine. But then getting rid of Son ahead of their uh, double game week in game week 26, seems like a waste of transfer, but it's the only way I can get Mo Salah in. Um, so that's kind of where I am. It leaves me 0 0.2 million in the bank. I'm kind of hoping I don't have to make this play. I'm kind of hoping, kind of hoping that I have to sort of just make one free transfer and then I've got two free transfers going into sort of game week 26. Okay, so this is my chip strategy for the kind of the remainder of the season as it stands right now. Now the back end of the season from sort of game week 32, 33 onwards, it's not kind of nailed in stone, but for the next sort of three, four, five game weeks, I kind of know what I'm doing. I've got five chips available still. Still got my wild card, still got my or two free hits bench boost and free hit. Um, so what I'm thinking about doing in game week 25 is hopefully I can just use one free transfer and roll the second one, giving me two free transfers ahead of game week 26. Um, and then I'll bring in Mo Salah and I'll bring in uh, Ben White. That gives me two more double game week players because it's a double game week. And I'll also use a triple captain ahead of uh, double game week 26 for Mo Salah as well. So that's kind of what I'm thinking in the short term. And um, then the blank game week in 27, I'll probably use one free transfer, but I might also roll as well. It just depends how the squad kind of shapes up and stuff and uh, any other injury news, etc. Potential double game week in 28 and 29, but they're probably going to be small ones. So then again, that might be one free transfer, it could be a hit. Um, in game week 30, which is a double game week, hopefully that's going to be a big double game week. Um, again, I'll just kind of adapt in that situation. I'll probably end up free hitting. Um, in that situation and try and target as many players as possible, trying to get 22 players out there. Uh, double game week uh, 31, 32, I'll probably end up again one free transfer or rolling. Double game week 33, I'll end up using my second free hit. Game week 34, I'll probably just roll or maybe use a free transfer, it depends if any doubles have been announced. Game week 35, obviously it's going to be another double we think, or Ben Crellinger thinks, so should I say. I'll probably end up wildcard in the head of double game week 36, we'll end up bench boosting and obviously trying to get as many players out as possible. 
And then obviously game week 37 or 38, I'll probably just end up adapting to the situation depending on how the rank is, etc. Do I protect, do I go for it, do I attack, etc. That's kind of my early sort of thoughts in terms of my ship strategy. I'll probably say the triple captain in game week 26 is pretty nailed, and the first free hit in game week 30 is pretty nailed as well. Um, the other three, things could materialise and things could change slightly, so that's kind of where I'm at. Okay, so we're going to have a bit of a live tinker, I'll run through a couple of different scenarios, if, buts, and maybe in terms of when to bring in my salary, etc. So the first thing we're going to do is take out Sufal and bring in uh, Tinny, like we suggested earlier. Um, and obviously Tinny has got a blank, so I'll take him out and then bring in Mitchell. Give Fernandez the armband. Um, there we go. That leaves me with two double game week players, De Gea and Fernandez. Uh, Dennis will end up being my first sub, right? So that's kind of what I'm thinking uh, if I just have one free transfer in game week 25. Moving ahead to game week 26, um, so what I'm doing here is uh, take out Fernandez and bring in Mo Salah, which is obviously kind of the part of the plan. And obviously, I've got another free transfer. Now, do I roll again or do I make another transfer? So, what I'm thinking about doing is, is making a goalkeeper transfer. So I'm thinking about taking out De Gea and bringing in Ramsdale. That leaves me 0 0.7 million in the bank for game of 27. Rams has obviously got a brilliant double there. Um, the rest of the team, how that will shape up, will probably end up playing Dennis, um, depending on how they get on game of 26. Probably end up playing Dennis still. The Dennis will come in for Antonio. Antonio will still be in my team, I don't know how. And then I'll bring in Tierney as well for probably Bowen. So that gives me um, nine double game week players, which is fantastic. It gives me Ben Foster, Antonio, Bowen, and Williams all on the bench. Um, and obviously, most I'll be my captain, and actually be my triple captain choice that week. So that's kind of what I'm thinking for game week 26. Now, moving ahead to game week 27, what I'm thinking about doing is obviously now we've got lots of blanks. So we've got five players who've got blanks. So Antonio will come in. So Antonio, if so I got a trend. We've got Mo Salah will come out for Bowen. Brandon Williams will play with Tierney. Uh, Tierney, sorry. And then you've got Ramsdale come out. And then Ben Foster will come in against Man United. Not the best fixture in the world, nor is Dennis over here. So all of a sudden I've got one, got one free transfer to make. And I'm thinking about taking out Diego Jota. So if I take out Diego Jota and then bring in Carl Tino. Bring Coutinho. And leaves me 1.6 million in the bank, and I'll probably end up captaining. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not sure. It could actually be Coutinho. It could be Edouard as well. That that week it could be open. I actually it'd probably end up going to Son. Actually, I forgot about Son. So I end up making Son as captain. So that's kind of over the next sort of three, four game weeks, kind of what my transfer thoughts are. And then game week 28, the team's in fairly, fairly good nick. So obviously all these boys will come back in. So Williams will go out, Mitchell will go out as well, um, Tierney would come in, <clears throat> and Salah will come back in as well, probably for, for Dennis. Um, and then I'll probably end up giving the armband to probably Mo Salah again. So he'll be a my captain. So I've got lots of different options there. Obviously Ramsdale will obviously come in as well. I don't, you know, Foster. So that's kind of one option. Now if I just refresh this, that's kind of the first option where I'll use one free transfer. Now if I go with um, Sufal um, for uh, Ben White this time around, Ben White comes in, um, and then also take out Son and bring in Mo Salah. I think I can afford him. Pretty sure I can. Yeah, I can just. So bring in Mo Salah, and then obviously Ben White will come out, and Mitchell will go in. And I'll play something like that. All right? So that's kind of game week 26. I've got game week 25, so we've got to have the two free chances. I've used them up. Going ahead to game week 26. What I end up doing here is bringing, back, bring, uh, bringing Son back in. So I'll take out Fernandez um, and bring Son back in for his double. Which seems like a waste of transfer, like I touched on earlier. But that's kind of the only way to get Son back in. And then obviously the team. Um, will mean that Foster will have to play because I'll have no Ramsdale, which is fine. Um, Dennis will obviously play ahead of Antonio. 
Bone will come out, Ben White will come in, and that's kind of how the team will kind of shape up. It still gives me nine players as double game week players, which I'm happy with, and then obviously Mo Salah end up being my captain again that week. And then game week sort of 27, I'll still make that transfer. Or, well, first of all, I'll take out obviously these players here that are obviously blanking, uh, the likes of sort of Ben White, etc., Mo Salah. Um, Yeah, um, and then obviously I'll still end up taking out Diego Jota and bringing in Coutinho. Because you got to think about as well, we're looking to have some doubles going forward. Obviously, Coutinho's done fantastic this midweek, midweek as well. So I'll end up bringing him in, um, and then again I'll probably end up captaining in, in Son. So that's sort of game week 27. And moving ahead to game week 28, um, sorry, I just need to take out Williams as well. And then De Gea will come in ahead of uh, Ben Foster. So that's kind of the team we'll line up. I've still got 11 players, got uh, Son as captain, which I'm quite happy about. And then game week 28, uh, I can obviously bring these boys back in. So Mitchell will come out, Williams will come out. Uh, ben White will come in for Dennis. Ben White, Dennis. Mo Salah for Brandon Williams. And then, yeah, Salah will probably get, end up getting the captain's armband again. Doing that, um, but something like that. That's kind of, kind of the team will line up for game week 28, uh, and then I'll probably end up going to game week 29. Probably not rolling, but then there might be other double game weeks out. So that's kind of how I'm kind of thinking in terms of do I go for one transfer ahead of game week 25 or go two? I've got two kind of situations. This website fantastic. It's called FPL.team. FPL.team. You hear quite often here Raptor talk about it as well. It's a fantastic website to sort of make your top transfer, see how the team lines up, how the team sort of shape up, especially ahead of those sort of double game weeks and blank game weeks coming up as well. There you have it guys, that is another episode in the bag for you guys. Mainly reviewing game week 24 and also planning really, really detailed in terms of chip strategy and transfer ahead of game week 26, 27, 28. And also we also touched on the epic, the long winded game week 23 as well, which obviously no one wants to really talk about too much. So. That's kind of what we've discussed today. If you do like this type of video, please do drop it a like, give it a thumbs up, um, and also maybe drop it a little cheeky comment as well. Let me know what your transfers are ahead of Game Week 25, and also what your chip strategy is going for as well. I'll see everyone next time round.